Hello, how are you doing? This is Richard with Sewing Machine Tips and Tricks and Odessa Sewing Machine. Excuse me. I have a Bernina 1008 here. And I'm going to service it, show you how to do it. But <clears throat> it has an issue. Um, in fact, I have 10 of these. I have 10 of these from a nonprofit organization here in town. And I've been working on them. I'm almost done with them. And I wanted to make a video on it. They have all of them. Every one of them have a specific problem. This is something that Bernina has done. And uh, when they came out uh, with, with the uh, 1000s, 1005, 1008s. And they did something to try to make their machine better. And... In the beginning, uh, when the machines are new, I guess it works pretty well. But as the machines get older, it doesn't work so well and it causes problems. So you either have to replace the part, which costs about $50. Um, and especially with, with 50 machine, with 10 machines, that's, that's going to be 500 bucks for this nonprofit organization. I'm not doing it. Um, or you have to fix this problem. And I have figured out how to fix it. I'm going to show you how to fix it. And on top of that, this fix is something that you can use in a lot of other places to help you fix a lot of other things. Um, something that I discovered a few months ago, several months ago, earlier this year, that works really, really well for repairing plastics and many, many other things. So without any further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the Bernina 1008. We're going to service it, like I said. Uh, we're going to get into this. We're going to pull all the plastic off the back and uh, off the side over here. Um, there's a problem down here. I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to clean, get everything cleaned out back behind what's here all right um there are this works with uh the thousand eight the thousand five um i don't know there there is a whole slew of machines electronic and non-electronic i say non-electronic they all have electronics in them to a certain point um just like this one this one looks manual but it has lots of electronics in the back um but this works with a lot of different machines, but depending on the machine that you have, it's going to depend on what you need to do and you need to be careful. I made a mistake one time and on one similar to this, I pulled some stuff apart that I probably shouldn't have pulled apart and it took me a long time to put it back together. It was a very valuable uh, and time consuming lesson. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, and you should do it on any machine. I forget to do it a lot, um, and sometimes I pay the price, but uh, is remove the needle. If you're servicing a machine, you need to remove the needle. It's gonna keep you from getting your fingers, uh, getting your fingers punctured with the needle all right and uh it might some of these could have some nasty crap on while we're at it let me see if we can see this i just seen this i don't know or i just felt this so this needle is damaged You can kind of see how this point kind of comes over the edge to the side a little bit. You can kind of see that. I can't hold it still very well. There you go. You can see that real well. I can see it through this, so I know it's got to be coming through. I'm going to, yeah, that's as big as I can make it. All right. That's, uh, that is, um, uh, that happens when the needle hits the plate, hits the hook, hits something else made of metal. 
and that's caused from um, sewing too fast uh, with too small a needle for the fabric that you're sewing on or it can be caused by pulling your fabric trying to pull your fabric through all right that needs to be replaced when you have a damaged needle that has to be replaced as soon as possible that damaged needle can not only damage your fabric that you're sewing on but it can cause more damage to your machine okay so check your needles often and change them every time you see damage be careful not to damage them um you know uh damaging damaging a ton of needles trying uh not properly using your machine can be very expensive so anyway with that I'm, I'm taking the needle out. I'm going to lift this. I'm going to take this foot off. Don't lose your feet on these. These things are expensive. Especially now. The last two years, it went up about 30 bucks. So, all right. So, we open this. Now, we are going... Whoop. We're going to take all this out. On this machine. Got a... Uh, a little catch right here. I'm going to push it and it's just going to pop open just like that and that pops down. Sometimes these come apart and they come out. Um, usually when that happens there's a small little plastic piece in the back that is broken. Uh, you normally have to replace this thing when that happens. All right. Um, I suggest you be careful with it and don't break it. I will put a link to these down in the description, but they're, they're what, $20, $30, I think. They're not, they're not cheap. And I've got, I've replaced several on these machines and I've got a couple more I have to replace. Um, always check this hook. You're checking it to make sure that there's no burrs on it, just like what that needle had. Um, when you when you pull on fabric when that needle bends if it bends backwards the hook can hit the needle and if the hook hits the needle it can create burrs that can create a lot of different problems it can create uh uh number one if it if it hits a needle it can actually cause it to skip number two if it's damaged it can cause looping it can rip thread uh shred thread break thread all kinds of problems so check this make sure that uh, it's good and if it's not you need to clean it up be careful with this side of it as this side's what goes up against the needle if you get this side too far away from the needle it will not catch okay and then you're just going to kind of check around the needle See if there's any marks or anything that need to be sanded out. Um, anything, the thread goes around this, so any any kind of damage can grab your thread and cause your problems when you're sewing. Okay, this one feels good. There might be, I'll probably use sandpaper on it. You can see there's a couple of scratches right there from the needle. A needle hit right there. You know, when I run my finger over it, run my fingernail over it. I can kind of feel something, but it's not real bad. It's it, it's probably not catching, but I'm but I'm probably I'm still going to run some sandpaper over it, 800 grit and clean that up. And I'm not going to just do it in one spot. I don't want to create a flat. I'm going to go I'm going to go a good get a good uh range of motion going so that I, I keep this, I, I don't create a flat, so I get it, uh, keep the curve going, all right? If that makes sense. Anyway, I will do that later. Now, to get this off, you've got that little pin right there. You've got to lift it over that easily. See how that comes off? You don't want, you got some springs there, and you don't want to tear them up. See the springs? You don't want to bend. You don't want to bend those out of place or break them. If you lift these too high, it'll absolutely break. They'll absolutely break. All right. So uh, you're going to inspect this. If you see much damage inside here, this has a little bit of damage, nothing major. But I'm still going to clean it up. 
We use sandpaper on the outside of it, but mainly I'm looking on the inside where the needle goes. This is my main place. <clears throat> this is where thread will get, get caught and cause looping, okay? All right, now we look here and we see lint. Nothing new, we're all familiar with lint. Get this closer, okay? So there's a ton of ways to get lint out. A brush is a great way. Um, I'm not using a brush right now. If I can get this, I wanna show you. It needs to come out, okay? You need to get all that out of there. See that junk? And just, uh, just so you know, lint in here needs to come out, okay? If you get a buildup of heavy lint in here, it'll keep the feed dogs from coming up through the needle plate, which will, as it builds up, it will stop, it will stop feeding your fabric. So make sure that this is cleaned out, all right? Um, now, I'm gonna go ahead and take a brush, a toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and I'm gonna just kind of clean that out. I'm gonna do more cleaning on this, but I wanna get this out of there right now for what I'm about to do. Okay, now, this is very important. With what I'm about to do, if you do this wrong, you're gonna mess up your timing. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do, get that out of there. We're going to pull this out. Why are we going to pull this out? Because the gears and everything is right here. <clears throat> and without pulling this out, it can be quite difficult to get the clamp out as well. I told you that there was a problem with this machine. Right here is the problem. Okay, this plastic piece is the problem. So, um, because it's worn over time and it's it, it's create a, created a situation where when the take-up lever starts to come up, it can't pull the thread. The thread's not letting go here. It's getting stuck and it's causing looping. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do, well, I'm gonna get the light closer and my light is messing with my camera. Um, let me see if I can do this differently. There we go, there we go. All right, so I'm going to turn this just like this, okay? So I want you to notice I'm I'm creating a mark here, all right? I'm lining this up with this, okay? That's exactly what I'm doing. It doesn't have to be 100% exact because uh, there's only certain places when you go to put this back together that those teeth will fit together. So um, um, it doesn't have to be 100% exact. But once you take this apart, do not, do not turn the hand wheel. Otherwise, you will mess up your timing, and then you're going to have to go through a process of trying to figure out where it was at. What you might do, what you might do, is turn this all the way, one way, okay? Right there is bottom, what I call bottom dead center, okay? You might turn this to bottom dead center and notice how it's set. Take some pictures of it if you need to, okay? Then turn it all the way up to top dead center. That lint, man. Take some pictures of it if you need to, all right? That way, if you accidentally goof up and you turn this, you've got some reference points on kind of how to set this, all right? So that you can take the needle all the way up or all the way down and have an idea of where to set it. But I suggest that you don't 
move it once you take this apart and that you set it right there. So we got it set there. Now I pull this camera up. I gotta have some room. I'm gonna take my screwdriver. You need a bigger screwdriver for this because this can be tight and you gotta hold it tight. You gotta push in pretty hard and turn. Sometimes they're not too bad, sometimes they're tough. Okay, now don't lose the screw. Make sure that you put this screw away. I use a coffee can for putting all my parts in. It's a very specific screw. You lose it and you're done, okay? Now, sometimes these things can be easy to get apart and sometimes they can be a bear. This one came apart real easy, it just popped out. Sometimes I have to use pliers and grab this, okay? Perfect example. See all the crap in there? See all the lint in there? See the lint in there? Okay. This stuff's hard to get out. Even when you take the back off of this, that's hard to get out. Okay, it's hard to get on this side of it and everything else. When you pull this off, it makes it really simple. Just don't turn it. Okay, don't. Well, I need to get further over this way. No, don't do that. All right, do not turn it. This is where most of it's at. And once you put it back together and you open the back of it up, you can get to the far side, all right? So, we're just cleaning that out, just like that. Okay, getting that all cleaned up. Getting the crap out of there. Still, there's still some in there. I've got a. Give me a minute. All right, I got a paintbrush to get in there. Sorry about hitting the hitting the camera. I'm gonna move it up. So. Okay. So the point is to get this out. see there's tons of it it's coming out i'm gonna move that back a little bit okay all right so you've got that out clean all this up some If there's any grease or any, anything in there, whatever, you want to get that out. I'm going to put this in there just to make sure it's cleaned up. Okay. And there's a little bit more there. And then we got to clean the back of that up. So, I oh, don't want to turn that. So, now you can see all the crap on there. Okay, this is a piece of plastic that comes through. Don't rip that off. You'll rip this off and then your thread will get caught in several places. You'll have other, other repairs to make. All right. So you can, there's a lot of ways to clean this. You can use a brush, whatever. Um, but you want to get all the lint out of there. Now, see there's some compressed lint in there all right <clears throat> you want to get that out if it gets compressed enough it will break this um berninas are built well so it's not as likely with them but it can happen this is a plastic gear okay 
Okay, so don't, there's a little bit of room right there. Don't get something and get in there and start trying to pry this or whatever. Be real careful with it, all right? This gear does not is not made to come off. And if you try to pry it off, you'll break it. If you put too much pressure on it, you'll break it. It, it is plastic. It may take a little bit of time depending on how bad it is and all that good stuff. All right, just take your time. You can use cleaners on it or whatever. Whatever you need to do, just as long as it is whatever the cleaner is you use on it, it doesn't eat through plastic. I personally, when I clean these up with chemicals, I use mineral spirits. Mineral spirits works really well. In fact, I'm gonna use a little bit on it just to help get this off. Well, I forgot to turn my camera back on and I just did this. So what I did, this is mineral spirits, is uh, I just cleaned this off just like this. And it took all the oil and stuff off of it, all the grease and help to pull the lint out of it because it destroys the oil and grease that's holding it in place, all right? Um, so mineral spirits works really, really well. In fact, if you look in there, if you look in there, you can see a little piece of lint that uh, came off and got in there. Right? So we need to get that out. I'll just put it in there. There's 10,000 ways to get it out. That's just one. All right? So we're going to uh, put our mineral spirits away. Dry this off. If you have an air compressor or whatever, you can blow this off with air. Not gonna hurt it, okay? If you notice now, it's nice and clean and ready to go. All right, now I've got to make another repair to this. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. I want you to see this though. Right in there, <clears throat> there is some lint stuck in there, some lint and dirt, and so I'm gonna get that out, maybe. There it is. There it is. <laughs> All right. I'm going to finish cleaning. I'm going to finish uh, drying this off. Make sure I've got all that mineral spirits off of it. And then I'm going to show you uh, what we're fixing to do. Okay, so first and foremost, you want to make sure this piece is clean, okay? Really clean, no oil, no nothing. Um, and the problem, the problem that these machines have is after a period of time, after a period, after so much wear and tear and a uh, um, little scrapes and scratches and marks and the thread cutting into here um, when it's sewing when the when the the needle comes up and the take up lever goes to pull the thread back up the thread is supposed to come out of here okay it's supposed to come out of here it's made to guide it down and kind of hold it in place um, but then when the take up lever comes back up, it's made to come out of here. And after so much wear and tear, it gets to where it won't come out. 
get so that it gets stuck in here until there is an extreme amount of pressure pulling on it. Well, at that point, it has already pulled thread from the spool uh, before this pops out, which causes looping. And uh, depending on depending on how much it pulls before this pops out is depending on the loops. It can be just a little bit and make small loops or it can make big ones. So how do you fix this? I'm gonna show you right now. What you want, what you want is some super glue and some baking soda. That's what that is, is baking soda. You may or may not have heard of this before. Um, it absolutely works and it makes really strong bonds, makes crazy strong bonds and it can also fill in gaps, okay? So you want a thin, thin layer, very thin of super glue. And no matter where you're using this, you want just a thin layer of super glue, okay? So I put a little dab on there and I'm letting it kind of roll down, right? That's what I want. I want it to kind of roll down. I want it to get thin kind of roll down and I'm going to take some baking soda and I'm going to drop the baking soda on it. Baking soda causes super glue to set up right now, right now, seriously, right now. Okay. Now all this baking soda has to be cleaned off here. You may have to do this a couple of times. Now I'm going to take this, just make sure I've got a little baking soda right there. And I want to make sure that that super glue wasn't too thick. Because if it is, the baking soda won't go all the way through. It'll just set the top of it. And with baking soda still on it, I'm pushing in so that if it caves in, some baking soda will go in there and helps help to set that. But it's not. It wasn't too thick. It was just about right. Now let's uh, clean this off. Take a look. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, I don't want this coming back to me. So I'm going to fill it in a little bit more. I, I want it pretty much level so that um, there's no way for it to get stuck. All right. I'm going to put just a little bit more. I'm not going to put that over the baking soda. Whoop, 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 whoop. I, that went the wrong way. Okay, so I'm going to clean that off. That did not go like I wanted it. That's why I don't put it over the baking soda. Now let's do it again. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Let it run down there. Put some more baking soda on it. Whoop. I got it most everywhere except where I wanted it. Okay. Let's get most of this off there. Now this has to be cleaned up really good before you put it back together. That baking soda will cause some major problems. Okay, it is quite rough, so you've absolutely got to clean that up. Now, you can see where that super glue ran to, and we've got to get that off there. This has got to come off there. The sooner it comes off, the better, okay? As you can see, it sticks really well. It makes a great bond and does really well, but this is not where we want it.
just kind of marred the top of it, scarred it a little bit. Oh, I'm out of the camera, so I don't know if you saw that. I just kind of scarred the top of it a little bit. I didn't cut all the way through it so that it would tend to break as I was pushing on it. The, the, the glue itself would break. It makes a heck of a bond. Okay. All right, let's look and see what we've got. Okay, we've got some more right there. I want to clean that off. I don't want it there. Okay. Same over here, except that, well, it's not right there. So, um, that's looking pretty good. It's pretty level. I'm probably going to put just a hair more on it. Just a little bit. Okay, just like that. And then get this on it real quick before it runs everywhere. Make sure that that it wasn't too thick. Okay. All right, clean the, uh, clean it off real good. That's looking pretty good. We're going to have to do some more cleaning on it. Hmm. I want that little bit cleaned off. There we go. Just like that. Now, to make sure this is nice and, nice and smooth, first I'm gonna take, this is a uh, Dremel. This is for a Dremel. And I'm just gonna take this and just kinda clean it up some. You know, I'm not getting, not getting the metal, I'm just trying to make sure that any big sharp edges are knocked down. Okay, just like that. I don't want that sticking up over the top. I don't want any excess on here. I don't want anything that the thread's going to get stuck on sticking up. Okay. That's all I'm doing is making it, smoothing it down so that there's nothing crazy sticking up, sticking up on it. That's it. I'm not trying to take it all back out again or anything. Okay. And now to finish it off, I'm going to get some sandpaper and sand it up. All right, so I think this is like a 500 grit that I've got here. 500, 800, all works pretty good. <clears throat> and I'm gonna kind of make it a little thicker. And it doesn't have to be perfect at, by any means. I just want it, I, I just want it to be smooth. That's pretty smooth overall. That should do it. Now, if it doesn't sew exactly right, then we'll have to come back and do a little more work on it. But that should be pretty good. I need to clean all the baking soda off of it, still all the excess. But you can see how that filled that in. And it is, it, it is a like a hard plastic. And it bonds really good to other plastics, to metals, to most anything. So um, if you're trying to make a repair, especially if it's something where you've got to fill some space in, this works really good. 
just do not get the uh, super glue too thick. If you get it too thick, it'll just make a hard bubble that will collapse and break. Okay, so you have to put it on a little bit at a time. Put a little bit of that on, put some baking soda on it, put a little more on, put some baking soda. But you can see, you can see how well that set up and uh, it made an awesome bond. So this works really, really well. This works really, really well for making repairs. Anyway, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this back up with uh, my mineral spirits again to make sure that all the baking soda is off this because like right there, you can see baking soda in there. That will screw up the shaft, all right? All right, so what I don't want is I don't want to get the bacon soda back in my jar. So I'm going to get this brush, put this here, put this towel here, get my mineral spirits, get it nice and wet, and then just put it on here real good, real liber liberally, wipe my brush off. Raise my light up out of my way. Just like that. Okay. And you can see the mineral spirits does not harm it. Does not mess it up or nothing. We'll make sure that I don't have any more back here. Okay. There we are. We we are done with it. Just drying it up and then we're gonna lubricate it. It doesn't have to be 100% gone, but it does need to be dry. It does need to be dry, okay? You don't want it wet because it will tear up any lubrication that you put on it. All right, so now you can see Clean this up really, really well. Okay. Clean it up really well. It's set really well. Everything looks really good with it. Okay. Now, let me, I'm going to, if you watch some of my other videos about my Triflow products, um, you probably know which one I'm going to put on it. If not, it's a gear. Triflow dry lubricant works really great because it's a gear. It's not, it's not a bushing or something, okay? So you don't want to put this on a bushing. Put it on gears. And especially where there's lots of lint and stuff involved because this will repel the lint. Now this is probably not, yeah. So my straw, you can probably, you can kind of see the crap in it. So that's good. Now I clean it out. Okay, take the straw out. Smell the layer compressor. Put that up against there like that. And you saw it come out the end. And I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay. We are good to go. Put it back together. And there we go. Get it on here. You see it running all over that, which is fine, no big deal. Clean that up. It will dry up. Dry up to a nice dry wax. And then we're gonna get this and we want to, I'm gonna put a little bit on here, but I don't wanna get it all over it. I'll put it like right here. The main thing, oh, 
Well, you can't see what I'm doing. All right. I don't want to put it all over this thing because part of this goes through uh, kind of a bushing. The main thing is I want it on the bottom. Okay. Where the, where the gears are. All right. Now, remember where we had that set? Let's see, I've got that. Nah, that ain't gonna hold. All right, so, oh, yeah, we need some oil. Okay, so we got grease back, or not grease, but we got dry lubricant there, but we want oil in here, all right? So I'm gonna put just a little bit of oil in there. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on this shaft. Okay. And then we can work on putting this thing together. Just take your time. This thing should fit on the shaft first. Okay. Before the, before the gears ever even start to uh, mesh. So you can get it up there now. The gears are touching right there. It's sitting, it's touching. I can move this back and forth. There it is, and it fell in. Now, you know what? It's too far. It's not where I put it. It's way too far this way. This should be further up this way. So, I'm going to pull this back out a little ways. Not completely out, just enough so I can turn it. There we go. And you see how far it went before it fell back in. There is a huge distance from gear to gear. So, um, it's really, as long as you don't turn the machine, it's really kind of easy to find where it goes. Now we can put the screw back in there and put it back together. If I can get the screw out. Maybe. There we go. Okay. Put that in there. They're not hard to put in and get going normally. Just kind of turn it with my finger and it's not starting. So you see, and if I set this machine flat, it'll fall out. But you see how it kind of takes it, it takes to the right spot pretty easily. I'll screw it in. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make sure this is in the right spot. The first thing is I wanna tighten that up. Then I'm gonna put the hook back in it. Just like this. Oh, I got a little, little glue on my fingers. Okay, I want a little bit of oil where that hook runs. Just like that. We're going to close this back up. Whoop. Make sure it's closed all the way. Make sure everything turns. Now we're going to put a needle in it. Okay, so I got a needle put in there. All right. I'm going to push this to the back. I'm going to open this back up. Now, I'm leaning this backwards. If you set this thing straight up, it's not going to work. That's going to fall out. All right, I'm going here. I'm going to make sure, okay, we are inside. We are above the eye, inside what's called the scarf on back. Now, what I want to do is I want to put that needle all the way to the left. So, with your control, with it set on straight stitch, you're going to turn that control all the way to the right. And there it is. The hook comes right in behind, right in behind that needle, just above the eye, okay? Right in behind the needle, just above the eye, when the needle is all the way to the right. That is exactly what you want. So I got that in place. Our timing is good. I put it all the way to the left. We've got that much room right there. You see the room? When 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 it's all the way to the left, it comes back, the needle starts up, 
and that's going to go in inside the scarf. The scarf is on is the cutout on the back of the needle. Um, just by looking at it, I can tell that it's inside the scarf. So if you have any questions, let me know. And now we can take our needle out and continue on. Okay, so on the back of the machine, uh, we want to take the little things out that hold the screws in, just like this. And uh, there's two down here. There. And here. Whoop. Got to be careful not to lose them. They will fly, just like that one did. And there's one more over here on the end. Right here. We got to remove that. Just like that. All right, now, this has to come off before this will come off. You need a flathead. So we'll take, let me move my phone, my camera. We'll take this screw out. <laughs> now, not on this one, but there are some uh, similar to this that have screws on the bottom that have to come out. This one doesn't. Okay. And then this has to come off just like that. Just pulls off. Sometimes it doesn't want to come off. And so you'll take one of these and stick in there. Don't push too hard. Just kind of work a little bit till it comes off. If you push in one spot too hard, you'll break it. All right. Now, this should just come off here. I say just come off. As you see, it kind of pulls some, it, it's got, uh, it's made over here to catch right here. So put that in, put this in just like that and it'll come undone. Okay. Now pull this out. We've got two screws here, one here. And one here. Let me move this. Just like that. Okay. And then this will have to be, this will have to raise up. You've got a piece right here, the cutter. It just slides out. Okay. And then this is going to have to be like in the middle and it comes off. And you've got this little piece right here that slides. When you go to put this back on, there's this and it has to go over the top of this. If it doesn't, it, uh, it won't fit right. All right, we'll, I'll show you that. And you can see all the crap in here that's got to come out of this all right it's got to be cleaned out because it's so open um you can use a brush to clean it out you can use some air and blow it out all right this do not do not pull this off don't all right this this controls your stitches all right this holds this holds this side in place all right this holds this holds a lot of stuff in place in here if you take this off half of everything in here is going to try to fall out and come out do not take this off bad idea all right um if you need to you can take the motor off there's a couple of screws on bottom 
some stuff here that's all got to be undone. You've got to take these wires off. I'm not going to take it off. I don't need to. Uh, but if you need to, you can. You just got to be careful. Take pictures. Remember where the wires go. These wires, this has to come up and off, and it will, so that these wires will pull out. You just want to be careful with it. Um, let me see. If you take this, push that just like that, push that up, that will come off just like that, okay? You want to be careful not to break it, not to break the electronics or the plastic. Again, I don't need to take this off, so I'm not going to. So I'll put it back on. All right. And it didn't, didn't get on there just right. There we go. There it is. These, uh, the, this holds all these wires on there to make sure that they don't come off. All right. And if you have any questions on this, let me know. Um, we're going to take this apart now. This is the only part that's a little bit different. There is a spring on each one of these screws. Okay. On both of these screws, should I say, not each one, both. And then we need to take this off. This is uh, an Allen wrench. So let me grab my wrench. All right, so like I said, that is an Allen wrench, but I have other tools. I have bits that will fit it, and I think it's, yeah, that's the size. And it is a 2.5 millimeter, all right? And it just unscrews. That's it. Just like that. And it'll come off. And then we've got to clean all this off. Uh, using air to blow this out works real well because you can't get in there any other way. Okay, once you get all the stuff cleaned out, and like I say, air is a good way because there's a lot of stuff that builds up in here. You want to lubricate it. Here's a bushing here. You want to get a little lubrication on that. Put a little bit in that hole, turn it, put a little bit more, turn it, <laughs> okay, make sure that's lubricated. Then you've got this linkage here, which links the main shaft to both the, the needle bar and the take-up lever, uh, yeah, take-up lever. So you want to put just a little bit of lubrication on that. Here's where it actually hooks to the needle bar. Put a little bit on that. And if you can see this. Right here. This moves. So I'm just going to put a little bit on either side of that. Well, if I can get it there. All right, there's there's little little stops there, so you can see this stop real well. Not you kind of see this one. Um, you're just putting it in between them. All right, now you're gonna put some lubrication on the needle bar itself. So you've got the lower side where it goes through the uh, the needle bar goes through. Uh, Needle bar goes through the frame that holds it in place on the bottom. It also, you've also got the top up here. So you're going to put a little bit of oil there. Okay. Now, another place that you want to get the oil and stuff. Let me show you. I need to put this on zigzag. Okay. So now you can see right here. I think you can see it. 
Let me see if I can. You see how this moves back and forth right here? Okay, you want to put a little bit of lubrication right there as well. Right here is a little ball joint. This will actually unhook it. Take it. It's got a spring in there and a ball in there. It's uh, that's what's actually pulling. That's that rod's actually pulling that thing back and forth. Put a little bit of put a little bit of oil on that. Okay. Uh, just to make sure that it stays lubricated and such. All right. Um, and then the only other place that, that you really need to lubricate right here is the uh, presser bar. And so you can see right here. All right. Put a little bit on the top where it goes through the frame here and operate it. And then right, it's hard to see. On the other side of this spring is the rod. Okay, so actually I think you can see it right here. Right there, right. Not this one, not this one, but it's right there, right there. You can see it there. Um, all you gotta do is just put it on the rod, okay? Because it will run down to the frame and then operate it just like that. Now, other places that you want to lubricate. So, basically, basically on this machine, anything that you see moving. So, this right here, can you see this turning? It's turning inside there. Put a little bit on there. See this moving back and forth? And inside there, you've got some movement, all right? You're going to... want to put a little bit of lubrication on that. And a little lubrication over here. You know, it. I know it's hard for you to see it, and I'm sorry. Um, just understand that basically anything that you see moving can have a little bit of oil on it. You're not going to hurt anything, okay? Now, we've got another bushing in here that we want to get to. It doesn't have a hole in it like the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this up just like this. All right, and you can't see it real well. Let me see if I can get another light here. See that shaft right there? We're gonna put oil on that shaft, okay? And it's gonna run down to that bearing, just like that. And uh, we can put a good bit on there to make sure it runs down. We're gonna turn it, and that's gonna help make sure that it gets in there. Just like that. Okay, so we've done the needle bar area. Got most everything in the needle bar area done. We've done this bushing. We've done this bushing. Um, we've done <clears throat> most everything in this area that we can get to. Um, now, we're going to just do what we can get to here. Okay. Most everything in here moves. So just putting a little bit of oil on it, on most everything that has a hinge point. Okay. It looks like it moves and you can absolutely turn this. Now, obviously this isn't turn moving right now. It doesn't have the right settings, but you can go through the settings, see what moves and what doesn't. But honestly, I would just say put a little bit of oil on everything with a hinge point that even looks like it moves because you're not going to hurt anything by putting a couple of drops in there. That's just going to make sure that it continues to move. Now, <clears throat> once you've done that, whoops, someplace that you really want to get 
is this motor, okay? So we still got several things to do here. So you see the little holes there? Those are made for oil. And while we don't want to over lubricate this, we want to get it lubricated well. So I'm putting a good amount of oil in there. It's just soaking it up. Okay, now you saw it come out the bottom there. Okay, that's pretty good. We probably don't need any more oil than that. Now, we've got this over here. There's a oil hole there and an oil hole there. Okay, so, and this isn't as clear to see, can't see it as well. So we're just going to, you can, let me see if I can get some light on there. You can see that it looks dry, okay? So I'm going to just start putting oil up here. I need to move my hand out of the light. Okay, but it's still all right. So, well, it looks a little bit wet, it looks a little damp, but I'm going to put some more. Oop, there it went. Actually, I think it just, I think it's from a mess that I made. But anyway, I put quite a bit in there. So we're not going to get any more. Yeah, you can see whether it was a mess that I made or not, it's not soaking in. It's just kind of sitting on top of it. So we're good. We are good. Now, <clears throat> since we've got this over here, this has a dual belt system. All right, this is a pulley. If you're wondering why it has this, this is because it, uh, this pulley adds, just this pulley adds a ton of power, a ton of power to this machine. So right here where this thing uh, runs on, we're gonna put a little bit of oil right there, right there. And you can't see it. I don't know how to show it to you unless you were here. But there's a lower there's a lower shaft in here. It doesn't run the whole length, but there is a lower shaft. And there's a bushing. And that bushing is right. Right in here. If you see this gear right here, this belt runs down to it. There's a bushing right here. So we want to get a little bit of oil there. If we get a little bit of oil between that gear and that metal, I guess you'd call it a box, then it's going to run down on that shaft, which will go into the bushing. Okay, so I'm going to put some oil in there and I'm going to turn it. And you can do it a couple of times, not going to hurt anything, just making sure that it gets where it needs to be. Okay, now what I'll normally do, now you can see right there, this is the uh, bobbin winder, this in here, and there's some dust and stuff there. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to just kind of clean it out of there. Take a brush and just kind of brush it out. The less dirt and stuff that's in there, the better. The less problems you're likely to have. And then you can see, or you can't see. You can see where maybe 
that turns inside that bushing. I'm just going to put it on top of that bushing. If I can, I don't know if I can do this or not with the with my phone here. Just going to put some oil up on top of it. Okay, probably got more than I needed. It's not going to hurt it. I can take a rag and clean some of it off. Just like this. Just to help keep it from making a huge mess inside the machine. All right. So we've got most of that done. Now, if there is any of these levers that are locking up then you definitely want to get lubrication on them i would suggest lubricating them anyway um, i can't really show you with with my phone and stuff how to do it but um you know there you can see one of them moving right there just uh, put a little lubrication on either side, just like that. And that will run in. And then you can do that between this side and this side. You can find where everything is, in fact, you can see part of everything moving right here. See that? All right. So there's that. And then if you look up here, you can kind of see movement inside there. Okay. So everything, again, has movement to it. Put a little bit of oil on it. So... actually got I don't know if you can see you can see the movement kind of slow down there right before it stops all right so it's kind of trying to lock up so make sure that we get plenty of lubricant in there on those moving parts sorry I can't show you exactly where to put it That's definitely uh, doing a lot better. Okay. <clears throat> okay, after you get that up there taken care of, and all we got left is the bottom. All right, so we got this here. You see this rod moving? This is the actual rod that we were cleaning earlier when we had it taken apart. And you can see there is actually a little bit of crap right there. It's not an O-ring or anything else. It looks real round. But it's not. It's uh, it, it's just lint. It's just nasty lint. Okay, and there you go. So we get that out of there. Then you can see 
right here, it's easier to see in person where there's rub marks. That's where it's rubbed back and forth here. So we're gonna put some oil on that. And we're gonna run it. And then we got another spot right over here. Sometimes there's rub marks. Yeah, there's rub marks, marks I can see them. And where it goes through there, we're gonna goes through that bushing. We're gonna put some oil on that. Okay. And then because this turns right here, we're gonna put some oil on that. <laughs> Just like that. Now, you see this here. This isn't a bushing, this is just a guide and it's not tight. It's not tight at all. In fact, let's see. Yeah, it's too small to get this to go through. So I put a little bit of oil there just to make sure, okay? Um, now, this is part of your feed dog system and you can see it moving, right? So I put a little bit of oil here a little here, here, down here, here, just like that. Just, uh, oops, you didn't see all that, so I put it some there, there, and there. Just to make dang sure that oil is getting in everywhere. Now the other place, this is the far end of that shaft, okay? I'm just going to put a little oil on top of it. I'm not gonna put it all the way around it because we've got dry lubricant below it. But I wanna make sure that uh, that any guide that's there is well lubricated. Um, and then the only other, only other place I would, uh, well, we don't have to because we already put oil in there when, uh, when we took it apart. So that's it, that, that is it. Everything has been lubricated. Had some lubrication. It's been cleaned. It's got lubrication on it. Um, it's good to go. Now, if you want to, you can clean this up right here. Uh, that's normally, it's normal for this to build up and just kind of be nasty here. It's up to you whether you want to do it or not. A great... Um, you can use a lot of different things. You want to be careful and not get a bunch of stuff up in here where you've just oiled it. But, uh, um, denatured alcohol works real well there. It's not going to tear up that paint, but it's going to remove remove all that dried dried oil. This isn't wet oil. This is a dried oil, so it's turned to a varnish. And you can see it already. It, I mean, it just denatured alcohol pulls varnish off nice. It does a great job. If it's real thick, it may take a few seconds to actually work in. Um, but overall, it does a great job. Now. Warning, denatured alcohol, not only is it flammable, if you're working on one of the old singers with the black finish, it'll absolutely rip that finish right off of it because it's a varnish, okay? It rips through varnish, so be careful with that. Probably not a good idea to smoke when you're using it. If, if you smoke or use anything else that creates heat, because like I said, it is flammable. So, but but still got a little denatured alcohol on it. There we go. Got it mostly cleaned up. I don't know what that was. Just a little bit of junk on there. All right. So now we got that done. We got the we got the front fixed, like I showed you. Um, we've got this put together. If you want to. You don't have to. You can put a little bit of oil, not much, just a little bit on the handle to lubricate it to make sure that it 
works smoothly. Okay. All right. Now, just putting it back together, and it goes back together just as easy as it came apart. Um, I would suggest putting this on first, and putting this on, and then putting the end on over here. Um, that's how it's going to go together the best. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and then we'll get back to it. All right. Um, I need. I want this in the same machine. I know it looks like it's same model. I've got like ten of them anyway. Uh, this one has a different problem, and I just want to show this problem and how to fix it. Um, um, I've already cleaned it and everything, but the problem is the race, the race cover. Okay, so um, you can see here. It's uh, you see these two see these two pieces right here all right this fits just like this but it's got a couple of small plastic pieces right you you can kind of see them like right here and they just they pop on but normally normally if they pop off or whatever they break okay they break in half um, <clears throat> and then they won't stay on. So you have to be very careful with them. Um, the hardest part is getting them on there, getting this whole thing on there. So I'm going to show you how to do that and how to do it without messing this up. All right. Okay. So the first thing you're going to need is a flathead screwdriver, but not just any flathead screwdriver. It has to fit this really well. The end of it needs to be really in good shape. Um, if it's magnetic, that's probably better. So like this, this won't work. This, this screwdriver, this is one of my, uh, Milwaukee screwdrivers, but I've used it so much and stuff I've done. The, the end has been damaged. In fact, I broke the, broke it on this one and I had to, uh, clean it up so that it would work on other stuff again, but this will not work on this. These are, they're, they're tight and they're small, um, and that all it'll do is just mess them up. So I've got this, and this isn't 100% the best head. I've got some others if I need it, but this should do the trick. You notice how it's flat. It's a little bit wider. It's, it, it, it is like just the same width as that, uh, as the opening in this head. So um we'll see get it on there just right put it in there you have to get it just when it's when it's that size yeah yep there we go you have to make sure it gets in there but that will help to keep from damaging damaging the head of the screw all right you damage the head of the screw and it makes it harder to get on and off right now and in the future so and when you, once you get it on there, you're going to have to kind of push down. You want to, the harder you push, the less likely your screwdriver is to pop out. And that goes for any screw. Um, and you need to hold it as straight as possible as well. Okay, so I got those two screws out. Mm. All right, so now I'm getting this back in. This can be difficult. Um this needs to be straight all right so and you want to be careful not to break these off all right so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get these turned up and i'm just going to lay this up there the best i can now it's not wanting to stay so i'm gonna i'm gonna find something to lay up against it Maybe even kind of prop it up some to uh, help keep it from popping out or falling down. And everything's sliding. Making this work can be a challenge sometimes. Okay. So, yeah. Sometimes these will just sit up there and sometimes they won't. 
All right, so this one isn't doing, oh, you know what? I've got it wrong, first and foremost, because this goes like this, not like this. So very important to make sure you get it right, and I wasn't paying attention. Paying more attention to the video than uh, actually what I was doing. So, okay. Now. As you can see, it's kind of difficult. And if I let this go at this point, it's going to fall. Well, maybe not. There we go. All right. You really need a magnetic screwdriver for this. Okay. And you can see how that's holding on there. No, but it's not straight, okay? This is magnetic. If it's not magnetic enough, I'll have to put another piece on it. Now, I just need to very carefully, I need more light. <clears throat> Try to do this without hitting this, there we go. All right. I'm using my finger to help stabilize this. I guess y'all can't see too well what I'm doing, so. Hopefully I can do this and without blocking it. Okay, so you saw it try to fall and then my, okay, my screwdriver's trying to come out. It can be difficult to get started. Okay. I'm going to try it again. Okay, I'm going to put that in that hole and then try to slide it up. And it's just not working. All right. Magnetic part's holding great. Let me see. Let me see. I'm going to try a little different head. Okay, sometimes a little, especially when you're putting it together, sometimes, not all the time, sometimes, a little smaller one, a little smaller head can help. It's not as likely to fall out. All right, so I need to get that back up there, like that. All right, get that screw in there. And you see how the magnetic really works. Okay. Got that there. Putting it in carefully. And it's still, come on. Nope. Nope, nope. It may take several tries. You have to be patient. Okay. If you get upset and get irritated, then you need to walk away. I've done this so much that uh, I've got a lot of patience with it. I can, I can work with it for quite a while before I get irritated and have to walk away. Unfortunately, I don't have any secrets to it because... There's no way for that screw to just like fall down in that hole that's threaded all the way to the top. Getting, getting this piece to stay here, but if you, if you lift that up too much, so let's see, let's, uh, let's try this. Let's go ahead and drop that down as far as it'll go. And we will put these pliers right there to hold that <clears throat> that's about the best secret that you can get is getting getting something to hold that up and hold it in place okay where the holes line up so it's less likely to fall the less the less likely it is to pull on that screw the easier it's going to be to get that screw in there and get it started all right, and so you see now, I got it in there. So what we're not gonna do, I'm gonna take this all the way up. 
and it's tight right there. Now I'm going to loosen it off. I'm going to loosen it off enough so that it will move because I need to get this other one in there. And if that's tight, I can't move it around like I need to. Okay. And you see how I've got that up there so it's holding it? <clears throat> I need to get this one in there and get it started. Once I get that started and get it in there, I can get it just about tight and adjusted and then or get it just about tight then I can adjust that where it needs to be make sure that you don't cross thread the screws if it cross threads you have to back them out and redo it again okay so that one went in all right now I'm going to back that off just a hair because that's tight I'm going to tight I'm going to take this one all the way down. And then just back it off just a hair. Okay, got to, got to make sure that thing is straight. Straight, straight. Okay. And then I'll tighten it up just a little bit. I'm not making it real tight. Just enough so that it's not going to move real easily. Okay. <clears throat> now, I'm going to close that. Okay, I pushed that up there and I closed it. Because that's going to make sure that it pulls it into place. These things have a little bit of movement anyway. That's going to make sure it pulls it into place. Now open it and tighten it down. Just like that. You saw it move a little bit more than I wanted, but okay. There it is. Done. Alrighty. Now we'll get back to the other machine. If you have any questions on this, let me know. Um, there will also be a link under the video where you can get these if you need them. Okay, so it's put back together. <clears throat> um, I threaded it. It's, I mean, it, it's really simple. You uh, make sure that you lift the presser foot and then thread comes here down, around, take up lever, down, and into the needle. You uh, raise the presser foot because it opens the tension discs, okay? Um, and then at that point, we're about ready. We just need to plug it in, turn it on, and see what it'll do. Okay, so got it plugged in, turned on, got the tension set on these, it's got that red mark which is sitting at about five, and here we go. Oh, something didn't work. So our, uh, my feed dogs are down. Let's uh, make sure I didn't make a mess here. Okay. There we go. Try this again. Okay, try this again. See what happens. There we go. I've got it sewing on the right. Hmm. 
Let's uh, put it in the center. Now I think I'm gonna do a zigzag. All right, let's see what it does there, a full zigzag. that done pull it out cut it so you can see on both of these stitches look good on the top stitches look good on the bottom so I'm gonna do one more one more <laughs> and uh, I didn't here are the controls on it, so maybe if you're not sure, okay, this moves everything, right? And then depending on which one of these you want to use, <clears throat> depends on where this is set, red or green. Um, we're going to fix to go to the red, all right? Now that's not the same as this. This is your feed dogs up and down. Um, we are going to do number 12 right here. So then if we're doing number 12, we go up to 12 here. Um, this is the needle, or the needle position, should I say, um, which is in the center. And then straight stitch is two, zigzag is five, and then the foot that you're going to use is one. So, down here, uh, stitch length is two. All right, zigzag is five, right there. And then this is uh, the correct foot. So, um, now, the only other thing is making sure that we are here. We're on red, right? And then here we go. Let's look and see what it looks like. <laughs> All right, so there's the top. Top looks really good. What about the bottom? There it is. Bottom looks really good. So, um, it's doing really good. Thread's not getting caught. And uh, if you have any questions on what I did in here or anything on this, leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. All right? And y'all have a good day. I'll see you later.